What is up, DTube? DTube. What's up, DTube? What's up, Hex, I guess? So it's day 37 of 100 Days of Hex. Yes, we skipped a few days. We, uh, time. This can, this can be a symbolic thing, like, yeah, time goes fast. Uh, time used, uh, time used flies by, you know? So, okay, so day 37. Today I want to talk about what I want to call that is back and poor people. So day 37. We're really getting close to 50%, only 50 days left, which is kind of cool. So dad is back. What I mean with that? Well, I think in crypto dad is back with hex. Because, well, these last 10 years... It has uh, been uh, a shit show. It has been a shit show. It uh, hasn't been professional. And uh, the Bitcoin story failed. Yeah, it failed pretty hard, right? Yes, it actually failed. So, okay, so that narrative failed, right? Uh, the Bitcoin narrative, it failed hardcore. And now we're doing the hex narrative instead, which is just a better narrative. Because, uh, it's a better narrative because the Bitcoiners, they want, they want a store of value, okay? They want a store of value. But, but Bitcoin is not designed to be a store of value. It's designed to move value around. So why? So you should move to Hex because it's better designed. It's designed from the startup game theory wise to be a store of value. Exactly what the Bitcoiners want. And it's designed better with lockups and the ability to earn more if you lock up for longer, if you believe in it more. That's better, right? That's like so much better design, okay? Now, I also want to talk about this concept of poor people. We have given people a long term, a long opportunity to get into Hex. When transactions did cost a couple of cents to pay to transfer Ethereum into Hex on Uniswap, it cost a couple of cents. I did it a couple of times for one cent. A couple of other times when I wanted it really fast, like 10 cents, right? Now, at the moment, it cost around $14. $14 to do a transaction. Yeah, it's just very expensive. Uh, it's very expensive. And that's just one transaction. You need to do another transaction to stake the hex. So maybe now, just to stake some hex, it costs around $30. And it's like a lot of poor people are not going to get in, right? Uh, you could get in earlier if you had a dollar. You could easily buy some hex, and uh, if you just had a couple of dollars, you could buy some hex and stake it very easy. Now you can't do that. Now you have to. Now, now, now it's the game is kind of changed now. Okay, so now it's like most people that feel it's worth it to buy some hex, they usually do it with a couple of hundred dollars, and then go stake it, because if you have a hundred dollars. And if it costs thirty dollars you to stake it, that that's like thirty percent goes away instantly. So now this is more of a game for rich people. Um, yeah, it's just a game for rich people now, and, uh, and that's why people recommended it a long time ago that you should get some hex and you should stake it for long periods of time. Okay, hex is still speculation. It's uh, no promises, no expectations. It's complete. It can uh, <laughs> speculate. It's, it's just a speculation game, right? Nobody knows what the price is going to do. Nobody knows what the price is going to do. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's it's mainly now when you have around 60 days left of the launch phase, there's probably not going to be a lot of people with like small amounts that are going to buy in. And those guys haven't even bought in earlier. So it seems like it's mainly going to be rich people that are hex stakers. And usually those guys are extremely long term, you know. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. 
So, yeah, I mean, they have 60 days left to get in on this low share price. And then after the big payday on November 19th, it's going to kind of double, like it's going to be twice as expensive. And who knows, gas prices might even be higher than also. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like interesting to see how they are going to behave later on when they see that hex is still around. It's going to be extremely interesting, especially the six months after November, to see how the noobs, how they behave when the hex is still here. Because it's almost like they seem, uh, they seem to believe it's going to go away or something like that, but the code is like locked on a blockchain. And it seems like Ethereum right now with a couple of apps, yeah, SushiSwap, uh, SushiSwap, Uniswap, Ethereum, all of them have passed Bitcoin in daily fees to miners. And th that's all on Ethereum, right? So, it, so Hex, is, uh, Hex is being run on the best blockchain that is growing the most, that have miners that are getting the most amount of money. And even Balancer seems to be... Um, that kind of exchange seems like it's also going to flip Bitcoin in um, in daily fees. And that's also on Ethereum. So it's like, it's going to be interesting to see how poor people are going to behave uh, when they realize they don't have any hex and when it's more expensive and when shares are more expensive. Are they just going to ignore it forever, even if the price would do something amazing? Now, we don't know what the price is going to do, but let, let's, let's just imagine for a second. Let's say the price would go up at 10x. I mean, that would 10x, I guess, the market cap, and it would be extremely high. It would be like $10 billion, and I think it would be around top three crypto. Hex would be like top three cryptocurrency with, uh, I think, only like a 10x. And that's like really high, right? Uh, it's already been up to like top 15, 16 a couple of months ago. And uh, 10x, I mean, it's, it's already kind of top three. And, th and that's, that's fascinating math to consider. Um, we saw that um, the payout per trillion shares uh, yesterday it passed four hex, so you got four hex per trillion shares staked, uh, which is kind of cool. It's it's um, it's gonna keep moving up higher. Uh, uh, I think it may around the big payday be very very close to. 5 hex per trillion shares in uh, in daily payout and that's that, that can be interesting to see and i don't even know how it's going to evolve beyond that but it's going to be extremely exciting because hex mainly gets exciting uh after the launch phase to kind of, because because the share because we know the share rate like the share price just keeps going up forever because that's how it's designed so it, it, so people that have a uh, bigger stake and longer stakes, they get more shares eventually in the system. And that's going to be extremely interesting to, to, to study. And uh, yeah, all these people that kind of ignore Hex and that kind of missed out on the massive opportunity, it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to behave in 2021, 2022, 2023. I, I have no idea. And it's also going to be interesting to see what kind of shit coins are going to be what what people are going to hype up in in 2021 because we're kind of coming now to a point where projects kind of start to gonna have to start to deliver or they're going to be pushed out of top 10. We saw that happen with Litecoin. It's no longer in the top 10 almost. It's like top 10 position at the moment and it's falling soon going to be like top 12, top 13 and it started the year uh, being a top 6 coin. Bitcoin Cash, it fell from uh, top five coin earlier this year and now it's like top eight coin mainly because they're not focusing on uh, they, they don't have a clear niche and they're focusing on gambling and nonsense and uh, there is a fork of bitcoin and we've seen these forks of bitcoin like bsv uh, satoshi's vision and uh, we see bitcoin cash all of these with bitcoin in their name that's just a clone they're kind of falling out of top 10 and I think eventually you're probably going to see even Bitcoin fall out of top 10 because you're probably going to have better coins with better markets that are going to outcompete these uh, legacy coins, these coins that will came first to the market. So, for example, Crypto.com with their Crow, they seem to be climbing the charts uh, higher and higher. And it seems like coins are trying to do something like Yarn Finance. I don't recommend Yarn Finance. I don't recommend Crow. 
I don't recommend those coins, but they're trying to do something more than what Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash is doing uh, or XRP is doing. And it's going to be nice to see these old coins kind of fade away and that, yeah, I don't like these new coins like Yearn Finance and um, and uh, Crow. Uh, they're way worse than Hex, but um, at least they're trying to do a little bit something new uh, than those old coins. They're just stagnating. They're just not doing anything right now. So I think, I think that is a little bit interesting to see that at least they're trying to do something, right? And it's really interesting how, how time is on the hexagon side, you know, because, uh, I mean, if you go, if you go to hex.live and look at the stake, if you have a, like a really long stake, at the moment it has like an API of 36.52% per year annual percentage yield. And the, um, the total percentage yield is uh, 11,316,000, uh, no, 11,316, 11,316%. Uh, that's, uh, that's moving up to 12,000% total percentage yield. And that's just in the hex, like the amount of hex that you get. And that's like, it's interesting to see that, like how time is on hex against sides and how the percentage have just kept on increasing this whole launch phase. That's kind of exciting to see. It's also exciting to see even when uh, stuff goes down a bit that we're still like a top 30 crypto top top 28 crypto at the moment uh 149 million dollar stakes for 4.77 years yeah, that's almost five years uh that is uh that's cool to see you know and uh and yeah i mean seeing how the gatekeepers are still gatekeeping hex they're doing it for way longer than we thought they would do we didn't think anyone would be that cruel and evil to hex cans, but apparently people can be very very evil so yeah it's like most people don't even know about hex still uh and we are almost at the end of the launch phase and uh I mean that's fascinating, right? I I cannot I cannot imagine that stuff would play out in that kind of way. So So yeah, I mean uh, that is kind of back in crypto with hex. True crypto getting away from centralized exchanges, you hold your own keys. You print your own coins just as you could print your own bitcoins at the beginning of the bitcoin and no and no mining costs dumping on uh, on on us because ethereum miners are already taking care of that cost isn't that amazing because we don't have that electricity cost so we don't have that yeah it's very expensive to run the bitcoin thing and uh, if you want it, if you want the Bitcoin to become even bigger, it's going to become even more expensive. And yeah, I mean, if you just look, <laughs> if you just look at the Bitcoin community, the 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 boring memes, the um, yes, it's no no guys in in the Bitcoin. They're not being funded, right? They're not getting new coins because all the coins are going to the miners. While with Hex, it's more exciting because the users are getting all the coins. The stakers are getting all the coins. So they have more incentive. They have more incentive to hang around and to try to make this project much better. So, yeah, the next couple of years are going to be very, very interesting because I think that a lot of interesting coins can come that hasn't even been invented yet that can really make a big difference for a lot of people and uh, and yeah that's exciting because i'm kind of annoyed with this industry where everyone nobody really has any coins almost nobody has any coins because everyone came in everyone or a lot of the a lot of the current crypto community came in 2017, 2018. 
and uh, a lot of those old coins that are still around, they came around 2010 or 2011 or 2012 or 2013 as how it was with XRP. So I think you have potential to have a radical, way better industry in a couple of years that is way more adult-like because people will have coins and then they have incentive to create more high integrity systems without any nonsense. At the moment we have so much nonsense because not so many people have any coins. These own super super little so they don't really have any incentive to... Uh, they don't see any incentive to be amazing, you know? And I can't really blame them. I mean, it's like, if you want, if you want amazing systems, you need to pay people. If people are not getting any coins, no, no interesting thing is happening. Same as we see with the crypto media, they don't have that much money. So they need to like kneel to centralized exchanges or horrible companies that are doing, um, Stuff that are not good for the industry, like leaking your data, KYC, and all this kind of nonsense. I also don't think there's that much hope for NFTs. Or maybe even blockchain. I, I thought for a couple of years, uh, up a couple of years ago, like 2019, I thought that uh, blockchain gaming would become like huge, but... Now, soon getting into 2021, it's harder for me to see because I don't really see that much dedication to make it amazing. We had some projects on the US, but uh, now they've kind of faded away and they're not really doing anything. And there's not that much dedication. There's not that many updates. So, and also probably with artificial intelligence, eventually a lot of those games will just be automated and... Uh, and then there's not that much incentive to kind of play them. Or you have, when people do blockchain games, you usually have a ton of greed instead. Uh, that doesn't make a good experience. One big problem at the moment with blockchain games is um, the transaction aspect. That uh, it costs too much to do transactions. And it doesn't seem like this is going to become better in many, many years. So blockchain gaming or NFTs is kind of going to get screwed. Like it's, it's going to take years to have uh, to, to, to have like cheap transactions on a stable chain. Like the best chain at the moment to do stuff on Ethereum is very, very expensive to do transactions. And if you want to have a marketplace where people are trading various items, it's going to be too expensive, you know. So at the moment, it's not really that sustainable. So, yeah, that's that's what I want to talk a little bit about today, that um, it seems like a lot of the industry kind of forgot that, yeah, the indus you're suppo this industry is supposed to be about decentralized and give people coins. And that's basically what Hex is doing. It's it's giving people coins that are they're interacting with locked uh, smart contract. It gives people coins. That are, that are telling the smart contract, okay, I'm going to lock up these amount of coins for this amount of time. I mean, it's true DeFi. It's true crypto. While uh, people have got this sold and uh, people have people selling lies about Bitcoin that um, you're going to 100,000 or you're going to a million dollars while you're still struggling to uh, reach uh, 2017 all-time high. Not even close to it at the moment. Still missing nine thousand dollars, and uh, it it barely seems likely at the moment that you're even gonna break fifteen thousand dollars. And uh, and yeah, it, the narrative is kind of like if you're not doing a hundred x in a coin. So a lot of people got into Bitcoin because that hundred x narrative. It was a good story that okay, this is gonna go. This is gonna do a hundred x. Is it, it? It has the potential to do a hundred x. But now, people are more starting to say, oh, 2025, we may have a five x ready. That's um, that's a lot of years to wait for a five x. And I don't think most people in this industry have that much patience. They're just gonna launch their own coin, and they're gonna innovate much faster because. 
five years in crypto that's a very very long time it's uh it's an extremely long time and a lot of things can kind of change and trans transform during that uh, time period so we try to get more people into hex by telling them about it and do extremely honest videos about it mm, we have hd videos talking about everything about hex but yet they still uh, complain yeah so i guess they're gonna have to buy hex later when uh, it's much more expensive and when there is uh, less uh, opportunity I talked a little bit about it in another video how um, we probably need new narratives and better narratives coming in and first we have this one with hex the trustless interest aspect but we probably need to work on even uh, even more interesting narratives because a lot of those old narratives that crypto kind of started on they're kind of fading away and uh, I don't really see people have the integrity to to defend them so a lot of stuff a lot of old projects is just dying and uh, nobody's maintaining them nobody's doing anything there's no interesting exciting roadmap roadmap or anything it's lame like it's super lame this has been an interesting year i think personally and uh yeah it's nice how as time goes on, the longer Hex exists, the longer it's here, we should get a larger market share of crypto and the crypto community eventually. Because anyone that has tried Hex knows how amazing, <laughs> how amazing a smart contract it is to interact with. Yeah, that's what I want to talk a little bit about today. Have a great day. Day 37 out of 100 days of Hex.